Hey guys, this is Austin, and this is the Vivo Next Dual Display Edition, and it is seriously cool. Huge shout out to Vivo for partnering with me on this one and giving us early access to the Next to show you guys. Pop open the box, and we have the Next Dual Display itself. Okay, this is really cool. So what's really special about this phone is it not only does it have a front display, but it also has a secondary rear display with some really cool tech. Oh man. I saw photos of this beforehand. I did not realize exactly what I was getting here. You know when you're at, uh, I don't know, like a school or something, and you're like trying to text easily, and you just like flip it upside down. It's like, oh no, no, I'm putting my phone face down. Do people do that? I feel like I'm out of touch with the kids. Oh, look at that. We have a bumper included with the phone. Now actually, just between us, these are my favorite type of cases. Skins are great, cases are great, but having a bumper on your phone is totally the way to do it, which kind of makes sense, right? If you have a screen on the back of your phone, you don't exactly want to cover it with a case. Wait, is that a headphone jack? Because the Next has all the fun goodies you would expect out of a brand new smartphone, we have an in-display fingerprint sensor. So if you look at the phone from the front, you will see that we have the fingerprint sensor, but if we flip it over, we have the facial recognition. So if I tap that, it immediately unlocks using my face. Wow, that's actually really clever. Because usually you have to choose between either having a fingerprint sensor or having that facial unlock. But here, you literally have whichever one is more convenient for you. Up front, we have a 6.4 inch 2340 by 1080p AMOLED touchscreen. What's cool about this is it is fully bezel-less and it does have a pretty impressive 91% screen to body ratio. That is because, my friends, there's no notch to be found. So around back, it is a 5.5 inch 1080p AMOLED panel. I mean, think about that, right? That's pretty much the same spec as a lot of high-end flagships from not that long ago. And it's the second display. If you want more screen resolution, just flip over the phone. That is super cool. Now with two screens, you might expect it needs a giant battery, but the good thing is you actually only really ever use one screen at a time, so it really doesn't make a big difference. And it is outfitted with a pretty impressive 3500 milliamp hour battery. I think a big reason why this works so well is that it is using a pair of OLED panels. Because they are so thin, it doesn't really add any extra bulk to the phone. I mean, this is just as thin as a standard single screen phone. It's so weird to think that a standard single screen phone seems out of date now when you've got dual displays on all sides of your super cool smartphone. Inside, this is loaded with flagship level specs. It has a Snapdragon 845, 10 gigs of RAM, as well as 128 gigs of storage. When I first saw this phone, I expected that the screen would be a gimmick, right? I mean, sure, it's nice to be able to frame up selfies or something, but the more I think about it, what are you really giving up by having a second display? It doesn't add any extra thickness. In fact, it might even help your battery life, right? If you are, say, running low on battery and you want to use the rear screen, I bet it's a little bit more power efficient since it's smaller. And on top of that, I mean, what are you giving up, right? Right? I mean, maybe wireless charging, I guess. But on the flip side, you have, well, a screen on the flip side. <laughs> you stink! I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't resist. What's cool about that second screen is that I can use it in games like PUBG. So right now I've mapped my fire button to the right side, and if I want to jump, I can just tap on the left. It's a pretty cool way of doing it. Of course, we can't talk about this phone without discussing the cameras. So there are three around back. There's a 12 megapixel main camera with OIS, there's a two megapixel low light optimized camera, and then there's a time of flight camera, which is used for the 3D effect, as well as for determining exactly how far objects are away from the phone. So with the back screen enabled, I can see myself pretty clearly, so if I want to take a selfie, with the AI beauty mode. And we also do have the portrait mode, so, oh wow. So the beauty mode is definitely a little bit aggressive, but I think a lot of people will like that look, even though I like something that's a little bit less filtered. That portrait mode actually looks really good, too. There's also a 3D face scanning mode. So if I move my head slowly. Whoa, dude. So I can change the way my face looks now? Hang on, let's, let's change my eye span. So now with that saved, oh, <laughs> So it's, I guess, putting that 3D model of my face over my real face. Man, I look uh, like so beautiful. There's also mirror mode. So this enables both screens at the same time. So if I'm taking a photo of Ken, for example, he can critique me from his side to make sure I actually get it right. Wave, wave, say hi. Hi. <laughs> it's pretty cool. That was very cool. I feel like I could do an entire video just like this. This is what video looks like straight off of the Vivo Next. Unlike a lot of front-facing cameras out there, this is a much bigger sensor, and because of that, it looks a lot nicer. And this is what the video looks like when you're shooting on the rear camera, or at least shooting in the standard mode. The stabilization actually looks to be pretty solid. 
One of the main advantages of the Vivo Next is that because it doesn't have a standard front facing camera, we have a much nicer sensor, much nicer lens, and some cool features to go with it. To put this to the test, we are outside at nighttime with a train in the background to see just how good the selfies are. Well, I guess in the video and the normal photos, but I want to see the selfie. Wow, I look way too happy here. <laughs> One of the main advantages here is the lunar ring. So in addition to having a pair of lights which do act as a fill, we also have a colored circle and this can actually automatically adjust based on the lighting in your area. So if I sort of get something like this, that fills it out nicely. And what's cool is you actually kind of get some interesting flares from those lights on the camera. It's a super unique look. To be clear, I mean, this is a good camera even without the light, but the fact that you have the extra options does make a big difference. I mean, that looks really nice. If I want, I can completely cut out the background and make it all monochrome. I mean, this, this works well. Of course though, it does not stop there. We also have video capability, as you would expect, because I've already shown the video capability. But let's see how it is in low light. The low light video looks pretty good. A big part of that is because we do have the lunar ring to help kind of fill a little bit of light in. But even so, this is not bad considering that it is, of course, nighttime. The Vivo Next Dual Display Edition is seriously impressive. If this is a taste of what phones are going to look like in 2019 and beyond, then I've got to say I am on board. 